Hello everyone and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we will learn how to leverage ChatGPT to perform code generation and design. So let's start with a basic example. Let's assume that I would like to define a Python function that is going to add two variables together. So basically all I'm gonna say, please define a Python function that can add up two variables. And then I'm gonna say, I would like to call that function and send it the following arguments. These are gonna be 10 and five. And if you press enter, basically what you see here is a pretty powerful code along with the explanation to that code as well. Basically it's telling you that here is an example, Python function, def df, add x and y, and then the function is gonna return x plus y. And then here, basically, ChatGPT understood that I would like to send that function or call that function and send it arguments. These are 10 and five. And then here you basically just perform the function call. So you call the function with its name, you send it these arguments, and then you obtain the results at the end. And it's also explaining to you that this will output 15, which is the result of adding 10 and five. Pretty good. And another point as well uh, is basically what's happening behind the scenes for ChatGPT it's just, it's not simply memorization. It doesn't just memorize that just, you know, adding a function or defining a function that add two numbers, it's just gonna be add X and Y. Basically, here I'm specifying specific arguments to send it to the function. So now it understand that these arguments are need to be specified here in the function call. And also it understood that I would like to add them together as well. So it performed the math operations behind the scenes and generated the output, which is 15. Okay. All right, so what I could do as well is I can also ask ChatGPT to define a Python function that can add up two variables together. And I would like to also test that function using the numbers 10 and five. But what I would like to do right now is I would like to achieve basically the same results using the shortest lines of code. So here, this is the only addition that I added here compared to the previous prompt. So if you press enter, here we go, here's gonna tell you, this is a simple function, which is basically called add numbers. And basically you can just call that function and send it 10 and five. What you notice is that basically this code is pretty much the same as the previous code. So I'm gonna say, well, I don't like that answer. For example, I don't like this answer. Any other suggestions? And let's see, here is telling you, well, sure. What you could do as well is that you can leverage Lambda functions instead. And if you are aware, Lambda functions, these are simply anonymous functions. They don't have a name and it's just so efficient, especially for very simple operations such as addition. You can just write the entire function in just one line of code. So you can also see the function call as well. So here you call the function, which is add numbers, you send it 10 and five, and then you get the results. And basically you can just do that in a single line of code, which is pretty good. Okay. Next, I would like to, for example, expand on that code so I can get the two numbers from the user instead of just using predefined variables or values that are 10 and five. Well, I can just say, please expand on this code so I can get two numbers from the user instead of using 10 and five. And here we go, certainly. And here, what you notice is basically ChatGPT has developed a code for you that can show you here that we are asking the user to enter two numbers. So here I'm asking the user to enter the first number. And here you will notice that we are doing type casting to cast the input, which is gonna be in a string data type to a float data type or floating point. And that's gonna be num1 and num2. And here we're calling the function with num1 and num2 and also printing out the results, which is pretty amazing. Okay, well, what I'm going to do next is I would like to maybe degenerate a Python function to find the largest number in an array. So if you say, let's go ahead, generate the Python function for us, and here we go, you will find that basically here the function, we call it basically find largest number, and here you're just checking and looping through the array to find the maximum number in the array, which is pretty powerful. Well, what I would like to do next is I would like to basically test the chat GPT capabilities in maybe a different programming language. For example, maybe I would like to see if it knows MATLAB. So I'm gonna say, well, can you convert this code for me, you know, from Python to MATLAB? And here we go. It is gonna tell you, well, you can certainly do this. And this is the code basically using M scripts in MATLAB. And of course you can copy the code here 
And it's actually pretty reasonable. And it's telling you that you can simply use that code to obtain the largest number in an array. And here's an example as well to test that function and simply obtain the maximum number, which is nine. And it's also showing you the explanation as well to that code, which is pretty amazing. Okay, what you could also do is that you can use ChatGPT to, let's say, generate specific numbers, for example, in a pandas data frame table. So what I could do is I can say, could you please write a Python function for me that defines a pandas data frame table for 10 bank customers? And here I'm specifying the headers as well for the table. So I'm going to say I need the name, age, net worth, and credit card balance. So if you press enter, here we go, it's going to tell you certainly. And here define a function, they call it create customer data frame. And it's also generating names as well for the customers. So again, pretty incredible. So you can see, specify that here, I specified only 10 customers. So these are the names, John, Jane, Bob, Alice. Here you can also see the ages as well associated with them. You can also see the net worth too. And you can also see the credit card balance as well, okay? And here it's basically showing you the function call, so how to call that function, and showing you the output as well that is coming out from calling that function. Okay, what if I would like maybe to write a program in Python to count the number of vowels in a given string? Well, I can go ahead and do that. And please note that up until this moment, I'm just testing ChatGPT capability to write Python code and also MATLAB or M scripts. And then next, I'm going to show you basically if it knows Swift, maybe C++ and JavaScript as well. So here we go. It's going to tell you, well, sure, certainly. So it's uh, basically defined a function. They call it count vowels here. And it looks like it's basically looping over the string, counting the number of vowels. And here, this is the function call. And it's showing you as well an example. And it's showing you the number is going to be three here, which is the number of vowels in Hello World. Again, really powerful. OK. Let's go ahead and test chat GPT capability in writing Swift code. So I'm going to say generate a Swift program to maybe find the factorial of a given number. So let's go ahead and test it out. And here we go. So here, this is simply the function that is going to obtain the factorial for you. And it looks like it worked. And it's also explaining to you the code. And here it's telling you as well, when you test that basically code, the factorial of five is 120. And it's showing you that the factorial of five is simply five times four times three times two times one, which is again, pretty accurate. Well, what if I would like maybe to generate a C++ program to implement a binary search algorithm? I can say that, so I can say generate a C++ program to do this. So basically if you press enter, here we go. This is again, another completely different programming language. So this is a C basically code and go. It's simply showing you the entire code. And of course, you can go ahead and copy that code if you like. And it's explaining to you basically how binary search work and how this function works in general. And then finally, I would like to test chat GPT capability to generate a JavaScript function to maybe remove all duplicates from a given array. So let's go ahead and test it out. So we're going to say generate a JavaScript for me to remove all duplicates from a given array. Here we go. This is the name of the function, remove duplicates. And here it's simply just checking out if we have duplicates in that array, testing it out as well, and showing you an explanation as well to the code. Again, this is pretty incredible. Basically what we have done is we tested chat GPT capability to write Swift, code, C++, Python, JavaScript, and also generate random values as well in a pandas data frame, or kind of generate tables for you, which is again, pretty amazing. So that's it. That's all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next lesson.